he had a right to use threats of force. He told them to back off, told them to leave them alone, and when those threats of force were not enough, he had a right to use deadly force. We've got another case in involving uh, self-defense, but right now we are pre-trial at a stand your ground hearing. Marcus Wilson, South Georgia, down in Statesboro, Georgia, is accused of murdering a 17-year-old uh, young woman who was in a, in a truck. Uh, he was in a car. He shot and fired the weapon. I think that's pretty clear, but he's claiming it is in self-defense. He was standing his ground. Uh, because he was being attacked by a group of drunk teenagers who were shouting racial slurs and trying to run him and his girlfriend off the road. Today was day one, again, of the Stand Your Ground immunity hearing. Let's take a listen to both sides in their opening statements. Here's what we believe the facts show. That in the early morning of June the 14th, 2020, there were five young adults Mason, Edward Gleason, Luke, Henry Conley, Marcy Elizabeth Nagley, Haley L. Hutchison, and Ashton Robert Deloach. They were traveling together in one pickup truck. It was a, a Chevy Silverado. It was elevated. It had a lift kit. It had large tires. It was old and ragged. They had partied in Claxton earlier going to various places. They had come to Statesboro, continued to party. Before heading back to Claxton, they stopped to use the bathroom at Parker's on Brandon Avenue in Statesboro. And while at Parker's, and this is so important, the evidence will show, they saw two Claxton High School students that they knew to be Mary Jane Swanson and Michaela McCain. We're gonna hear from them. The party admitted to seeing Swanson and her friends leave Parker's. However, the party of teenagers did not speak to Swanson and her friends, and there's a reason they didn't. Because they were there with, with black guys. Wilson and Rigdon pulled up at the traffic light where the party, the Chevy Silverado black truck, was waiting for the light to change. The party saw the sedan driven by Wilson pull up next to them, and they immediately mis mistook Rigdon, you're going to see Mary Jane Swanson and Emma Rigdon. Watch when they come in this courtroom. They mistook Emma Rigdon, who was in the passenger seat of Marcus Wilson's car, for Mary Jane Swanson, who was with the black guy earlier at the party in the Silverado, began hanging out the window and yelling racist remarks, calling Wilson, who they thought was Mary Jane Swanson's boyfriend, and continue in the same taunts they began at the gas station. Your lives don't matter. Instead of backing off, they continue to swerve closer and closer towards Wilson's sedan while threatening. And then, then the party began to throw what they admit were objects at Wilson's sedan, beer cans. Fearing for Rickner's life, fearing for his own life, Wilson made, God forbid, we ever are in that position to have to make the split second decision to fire shots. As we all know, unbeknownst to both Wilson and Rickman, during that second sh set of shots, one of those bullets may have entered the vehicle and may have struck Haley Hutchison in the back of the head. A reasonable person standing in Mark Wilson's shoes that night believed, would, could reasonably believe that their life was in danger. And Your Honor, that's what we're going to show in this show that by more than a department of but at least to a department of We'd ask that you would uh, grant immunity and forbid the prosecution of Mark Wilson for the offenses of that day. So what Mr. Johnson has just done is given the court a narrative of what he believes the facts are in this case as of today. Um, the narrative has changed in this case multiple times. One of the most important things that came out of that interview that is part of the actual facts is that Emma never heard one single racial slur uttered. But the tragedy of that night is that Haley ended up dead. And she ended up dead at the hands of Mark Wilson
because he fired a gun not once, not twice, but multiple times. He shot her in the back of the head. And that, that's how she spent her last minutes while her friends did take her to the hospital here in Statesbury. Part of the actual facts in this case that are going to come out throughout the next couple of days are that Mr. Wilson didn't call the police. He didn't call any of his family that lives locally who he had been at their home just a couple of hours earlier. One of them is in law enforcement. We believe that the actual facts, Your Honor, are going to be worn out over the next few days. And we believe after the court hears the actual facts that there will be evidence before the court that would be sufficient so that the court could deny this motion for immunity so that this case could move forward to a trial. Obviously, two different versions of exactly what happened, uh, but Haley Hutchins was shot and killed, 17 years old, passenger in that Silverado. Let's bring back in the think tank, Eklund Mercy, Nima Romani, Kirk Nurmi. Kirk, this is a stand your ground hearing. This is where the judge can take care of it all and just immunize Marcus Wilson, charge is gone, no civil suit, and he gets out of jail. Your thoughts about this hearing under these uh, alleged facts? Well, you know, it is kind of unique in the sense that a judge can take complete control of this and dismiss this case. And we saw when we see some of the witnesses on behalf of the state, how much they equivocated on what was said. You know, they said, oh, was there racial slurs? Maybe, yeah, they weren't yelled. They Does, might have wait, been let me ask you that, though. Does it matter? Does it matter? How important is that when it comes to self-defense, what someone is saying versus what they are doing? Well, I think it all boils into it, and it boils down to witness credibility, too, because you, you keep in mind now, you don't have a jury doing this, you have a judge. So you have somebody who's pretty seasoned and will be looking at these equivocating witnesses with a more suspicious eye based on whatever else they say they've done, too, versus opposed to what the defense comes forward with. So I think that makes the defense, and they're going to be doing it on the law. The judge is going to be doing it on the law, not the emotion. So I think when we see witnesses like this and we see a strong defense come out and maybe we'll see Mr. Wilson offer some testimony. But, you know, that makes it more likely that I think he, Mr. Wilson has a, has a chance at this hearing. Nima, multiple shots, didn't call police and the victim got shot in the back of the head. And she's not driving the Silverado. So is, the, does that, is that self-defense? Does that sound like self-defense to you? Well, I think self-defense is a jury issue, and that's why I don't like standing your ground, and that's why these facts should go to a jury. I mean, obviously, it's a stand your ground state, so we're dealing with this right now. But going back to Kurt's point, I think the racial slurs, if they're made, do matter. This is a black man in the South. I mean, he's being chased by a car full of or at least biracial or black, whatever the case may be, of white people. So that absolutely goes to his state of mind and whether he's acting reasonably in, exercise, in using deadly force. Now, was it reasonable to shoot five times? Again, that's something I think that should be fleshed out for our jury, but those are very, very relevant facts, in my opinion. And I think Wilson's got a good shot, and for once, I think the shoe's on the other foot here in a stand-your-ground case. Eklund Mercy, was his life in jeopardy? Was he in fear of great bodily harm? Well, uh, the only thing is, like, when you're in that situation, I, I probably am the only one that has been called the N-word and since being on court TV have been called it multiple more times. Um, it's different. When you're out in the streets, when either it be young or old, when that happens, when you're, you're really fearing for your life, you don't know if they're playing games. You don't know if they're joking. You have no idea. If they're coming after you, it's a different, I can't even explain to you. You have no idea what you're willing to do, what you want to do, and what you could do. So it's putting yourself in that position. That's why, you know, jury duty is so important. But I do believe that we have this so often, especially in the South. So I do believe that Wilson has a chance being a black person, having the N-word thought at me, being in different situations you really don't know what to do. So uh, I think that he has a chance and I think that it should be granted. All right, folks, uh, it's continuing. This hearing will continue tomorrow, uh, March 3rd. We're gonna have much more coverage of it tomorrow night. Uh, we'll break down the testimony as well. Uh, this is an important, important hearing. Uh, the entire case could go away or Marcus Wilson could be heading off to trial.